While flooding is still plaguing China's longest river, a new round of flooding is emerging upstream, the biggest yet this year. Downstream, a major river's water levy has climbed above its warning lines, but several restaurants are found inside its embankment and they're still open. NTD's Juliet Song has more. In southern China, a major river's water level has hit a historic high. But several luxury restaurants were found inside the river embankment, even though they weren't supposed to be there. On top of that, they were still open while authorities raised the flood alert to its highest level. The restaurants have been there for six years. Even though it's not legally approved, the company that built the embankment opened up space inside and rented units out to business owners. As a result, authorities tore down the restaurants overnight. While massive flooding is still plaguing regions surrounding the Yangtze River, the country's longest river, a new wave of flood water has emerged upstream, and it's the biggest yet this year. Regions upstream are already suffering. In parts of Sichuan province, torrential rain is triggering landslides. Roads have been damaged, signals are cut off, and the power went out for some areas. A video circulating online shows a man braving the flood while trying to save his cattle. Moments later, the strong current washed away a young calf as an older animal appeared to chase after it. In the end, all of them were washed away and the man came back empty-handed. Moving further downstream to a city hit particularly hard by the flooding. Videos posted online show massive flood water as it washed away multiple cars. And a narrow escape, a person trapped inside a flooded building was seen reaching out his hands for help. That's as the water had nearly filled the first floor. Before long, the entire first floor was submerged, but the voice in the video said the person managed to escape. A large part of the city's downtown area is already underwater. Further downstream, floodwaters are almost as high as the tops of school buildings. Besides the waves of flooding, other natural disasters are also striking the country. Areas upstream from the Three Gorges Dam recently reported a magnitude 3.4 earthquake. The destruction has sparked concerns about the safety of the famous dam. One expert, well known for his research on the dam, said previously that it can only withstand earthquakes below magnitude 6. The upstream region has already seen several earthquakes this month, the biggest of which was magnitude 4. Juliet Song, NTD News. Senior lawmakers are questioning a Chinese state firm's involvement in the construction of a UK nuclear plant after it was revealed that more than 100 Chinese engineers and experts are working on site. NTD UK's Neil Woodrow will bring us more news from Europe. A deal was signed off in 2016 between the UK government and a French developer EDF to build a plant in southwest England. China General Nuclear, or CGN, took a nearly 40% stake, vowing to be a financial backer only. CGN is a state-owned company. However, the Sunday Telegraph reports CGN has more than 100 engineers and technical experts working on Hinkley. A former Conservative leader said it was obviously never just going to be a financial partnership. Nick Timothy, who tried unsuccessfully as Mrs May's top advisor to block the Chinese deal, said, If it is true that China has a significant operational role at Hinkley, then there are many questions that need to be answered. And the Trump administration has relaxed controls on exports of military drones. It's a move that could help U.S. national security and boost the U.S. economy. U.S. defense contractors can now sell more drones to more countries after President Trump signed a new policy. According to the State Department, this will boost the American industry and help U.S. partners and allies meet urgent security and commercial needs. The action bypasses the Missile Technology Control Regime, or MTCR, which is an informal agreement between 35 countries to prevent the spreading of nuclear arms. Trump's plan reclassifies drones that fly below a certain speed, allowing them to be sold to allied nations while avoiding the MTCR's harsh regulations. 
The White House says the MCTR handicaps U.S. partners and allies while giving an unfair advantage to countries outside of the agreement. Assistant Secretary Clark Cooper of the State Department's Bureau of Political Military Affairs says stopping the spread of weapons technology to nations like North Korea and Iran remains a top priority for the administration. Foreign countries and allies want to buy U.S. drones for counterterrorism and security missions. A Republican senator says the international limits on drone exports have allowed the Chinese military to advance its defense technology. He says it's also led China to build relationships with traditional U.S. partners. Under Trump's presidency, the U.S. has withdrawn from other international treaties, including the Iran nuclear deal and the Paris Climate Accord. A new poll shows over 60 percent of Americans say the current political climate prevents them from sharing their views. The study shows conservatives are less comfortable sharing their political opinions than liberals, but more people of all political groups feel as though they are walking on eggshells. Whether you're a diehard MAGA Trump supporter, this is about easing the squeeze, or you're riding with Biden, or neither, you may be less likely to share your political views nowadays. A new study shows 62% of Americans are reluctant to share their political opinions out of fear of offending someone. That number has increased four points since 2017. The results come from a recent survey by the Cato Institute, a think tank based on the principles of individual liberty, limited government, free markets, and peace. Cato polled 2,000 Americans in this survey. They found that the only group that feels they can speak up about what they believe is strong liberals, while conservatives are more likely to keep it to themselves. But everyone across the political spectrum is hiding their views more and more since 2017. The study also shows nearly a third of employed Americans are worried about losing their jobs if their employers find out about their political stance. A phenomenon that has emerged in recent decades is called cancel culture, which refers to withdrawing support of people or companies that have said or done something considered offensive. The study shows the cancel culture appeared more often among strong liberals as half of them said they support firing someone who donated to the Trump campaign. This is compared to about a third of staunch conservatives who said they'd support firing Biden donors. A Londoner who was stabbed and nearly died as a teenager is now a British boxing champion. He's telling his story to help others. He spoke with NTD's UK correspondent Jane Werrell in London. I had the most severe stabbing, nearly died. At 15 years old, Richard Riakpour was caught up in a stabbing outside a nightclub. A man approached him and his friends. He started asking everybody to give, give their phones over. And he asked a guy, he, he hesitated, he, he, got, he stabbed him, proceeded to stab him. He proceeded to stab uh, a few other individuals. And I ended up getting stabbed as well when he asked me for my phone. I'm very lucky to be having this interview with you because it could have gone either way. There's a lot of people that had that same type of injury and didn't make it, they're, they're six feet deep today. He was drawn into street life from a young age, but that experience changed everything. I decided I wanted to, you know, pursue success, change my environment, change my life. And that's when I started off by walking into a boxing gym. I then went on to study graduated and then I turned professional. Just two years later, in 2019, he won the British Cruiserweight Championship. To this day, he's undefeated in professional boxing. He talks to young people about his experiences. With me, I like to tell my story a lot because when I was in that situation, I never had people to give me advice. And tries to motivate and inspire them. Do what we can to make this, this world a better place and help individuals all across the world because that's what you know, life is all about, you know, in, my, in my opinion. You know, helping others and lifting others up and just trying to make a better world. Time is priceless, you don't get it back. Jane Rubble, NTD News, London.